And we're live. This is Julian Jean Pierre from the Royal St. Lucie and Seamoss Company, live and direct from St. Lucia. I'm so excited to be here. And um, it's been a little while. I um, haven't been on Lunch Streams since like last Wednesday, skip the Sunday. And I uh, said I was going to do a new stream on Monday. Didn't, you know, is what it is. That's the Seamoss life. I love it, and um, yeah, I was going to try and do um, a morning uh, sunrise to watch, but unfortunately the weather wasn't cooperating with us. It's uh, very common in St. Lucia for it to rain in the morning, and so this morning did not get the point. It rained really hard, and I was tired, and so I looked at the hell no, my lord, <laughs> in the rain, like, like for a while, it didn't sit about you know you can get that weather now uh forget that i am now and uh i can't drive i'm a little tired it's been like great late one o'clock <sighs> so i'm gonna be doing a lot of yawning so i actually did a live stream last night on instagram just because i wanted to test out the new gear that i got I don't know if you guys have noticed, uh, especially those on YouTube and Facebook, the picture is amazing. <laughs> and that's because uh, I, uh, we splurged and we invested in a new laptop for the company. And so I'm using that now to do the live stream. And uh, yeah. It is what it is. So let's get into it. What do you guys want to talk about today? To be honest, with you, I probably won't be on here too long, just because um, yeah, because um, there's a uh, breakfast. So I'm just trying to get try to get that. I'm trying to remember my password for doing my account. And I just might have to reset my password. Yeah, I'll do it later. Ooh. Is it good? Is it bad? Is any good comment here? Oh, good morning, Renee. Question here. Okay, so Renee's asked, um, so can you expand about the debate of carrageenan and the inflammation and an eczema causes this? So, and I know what she's talking about. She's talking about some of the research that was done on um, carrageenan on the I think it was like mice or something like that. They did a lot of tests for cancer. They did tests, like all these kind of like tests to, to see how carrageenan can affect the body. And, and the results that they got weren't um, very favorable, so to speak. Um, I still need to sort of do more learning in this area, but from my kind of, ex like from what I've read and understood was that while these tests came out with some like um, questionable results on whether or not carrageenan is healthy for you. Um, what what they did also was that it was the way that they tested the carrageenan. And so a lot of people are um, looking at this report and they're, they're kind of like saying, well, look, the carrageenan that you tested and did all this stuff, it was on processed carrageenan. You know, carrageenan that had already been extracted from the from the sea moss and so when you when you use these special processes to extract anything you know a lot of times these, these processes they're not very um beneficial to man they're not they're not i don't want to say safe 
but they're just not good. And it's possible that the the reason why the carrageen is having a negative effect on our bodies, causing inflammation and other things, is because of the way that it was processed using different chemicals and stuff like that that could be still residue within the carrageenan. And and that, you know, if they tested um, eating natural carrageenan, carrageenan straight from the CMOS or just the CMOS directly, then would it have the same results? So you got to remember that when they're doing this test, they're only testing the carrageenan that has been extracted. It, they're not testing the full CMOS with the carrageenan in it. So it's quite different. Um, like when you consume CMOS, it's it's in, it's in a totally different state than if you were to, the carrageenan is in a totally different state than if you were to consume it um, after it had been extracted from the CMOS. I don't know if I explained that right, but to sum it up, kind of like, I don't believe the carrageenan, or from what I've read, I don't believe the carrageenan is bad and it's natural to eat directly from the CMOS. But if you were to eat, say, pure carrageenan from, that was extracted from CMOS, that could possibly have an issue because of the way it was extracted. <clears throat> I hope that answers your question. But I, I did do some reading about that because people were, I once got into an argument where people were saying that CMOS is bad and CMOS does this and, you know, you know people could die from taking CMOS and all this crap. You know what I mean? And they were specifically mentioning, um, I think it was Euchidema or something like that as being not safe because of the carrageenan in it. And, um, which I don't believe is the truth, right? I mean, with the amount of people that are taking CMOS, the amount of time that people are taking CMOS, if there was some negative side effects or, like, bad benefits, then we'd be aware of them. I mean, like, we're aware that if you have um, issues with your thyroid, you shouldn't be taking the, um, the CMOS, or you have to be cautious when you So, you know... It, it is. Oh, hang on. I think we did a follow up question. Yes, makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad that I was able to make sense. Okay. Looks like the cloud is. Let me get up and just look quickly. It looks like the cloud is in the garden to clear up. But there's still some more clouds. This is the, the rain season. And so you're going to get. <laughs> It's, it just rains all the time, as opposed to the dry season. You know what I mean? So, let me know if you have any more um, questions tonight. I'll be happy to answer them. And because uh, that's a good question, a lot of people are always wondering about this. Like, you know, oh, CMOS is so good for you. What about what they say with the carrageenan? You know. I hope that brings so some light to your hair, Gina. Yeah. I think anything in its natural state is definitely more better for you than something that's been extracted by man. Um, if that makes sense. Good morning, breast cancer journal. Yes, I'm enjoying beautiful St. Lucia. Only this is my what, second day here, or is it my third? What's today? Tuesday. So technically, it's my third day. Yeah, because I got here Sunday night, or Sunday, and then Monday was our kind of full day here. We chilled out and stuff like that. And um, then uh, yeah, today's like our first day, like second full day. Oh, nice! You were in Saint Lucia two weeks ago. I hope you had a, a good time there and uh, got to do a lot of cool things. I, I'm excited. I think we begin to think about what we're going to do while we're on the trip. I know I want to do zip lining. I know um, there's a few other things I want to do. Get some good footage, you know. But bring back uh, bringing back lots of uh, good CMOS. Yes, I, I would. I always bring back CMOS. Um, last time I was here, I brought uh, pretty much my full suitcase. Now I have two suitcases I'm bringing back. So I'm going to bring back two large suitcases for the moss. I might have one change of clothes in the whole thing. They're going to look at me like, what the? But I'll be like, yeah, bro. Sea moss, Don. Wagwan. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's gonna be me. The female's gone. Nah, I'm not a dog. But, um, you know, I have a, definitely have a passion for CMOS. I've, I've invested a lot of my time and energy. Breast Cancer Jones says, yes, I always buy it from you. And thank you. I appreciate the business. You know, we work hard to, um, I didn't even say we work hard. I'm, I'm more just the face of the business. My partner works hard, extremely hard. Him and his team, you know what I mean? They are some of the best. Um, whether they cultivate, dry, or or, or um, like whether they harvest it or they they simply do the drying themselves or they they buy from other people, they know what to buy and what not to buy. They know how to like a, a lot. We reject a lot of semen because it needs to fit a certain standard of quality that the customers that are buying from us like speak like expect, and it's it's consistent. And I mean it's challenging and I don't like to like promote it but what we like to do is make it consistent for everybody and so if you consistently like brown darker sea moss we can make sure you get that you like consistently like the lar- lar- lighter stock of kind we got that you want that dry brittle stuff you know what I mean that's great for making gel we can get that we get pretty much any sea moss on the island there, there is no sort of like there's no sea moss that someone has that we can't get access to you know what I mean? And so you just need to communicate with us and let us know what your needs are. And our job is to work towards your needs and be that support to help your business grow. And as you grow, we grow with you and we make sure that um, you're kind of supported on the way. And anytime you need any, I don't know, advice, uh, pick me up, any support, I'm always there. Ask anybody, call me, I pick up my phone, you know, I'll show you a message. Someone called me last night, messaged me at like 1230 at night. Says, hey, I need I need this much CMOS. Can you do it? Yeah. And I answered him back. You know, I didn't look at my phone. They're like, oh, it's after 12. Business is closed. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hate that. You know what I hate? I hate when I go to a store. Two things I really hate. I hate when I go to a store and it's like, say, two minutes before they're closing and they want to get out of there. And they're like, oh, sorry, we're closed can help you. You know what I mean? It's like, what? Bro, someone comes to my door with money, I'm taking it. I don't care. You know what I mean? I'll actually tell you a little story that my uncle taught me, right? When I was young, when I was like 14, 15, I, I went to work with him, right? My mom had this thing, like, if you didn't go to school, you had to work. So I was one of those kids. It's not to say I was bad in school. I know it sounds kind of conceited to say this, but School was so easy for me that I didn't see it as a, as a serious challenge, so I never went all the time. So imagine you have, like, you you don't hand in assignments, you don't hand in, you, you don't go to school all, all the time, you skip class and stuff. But when it comes time to do the exam and the test, you ace it. Boom. And that was one of the things that they always say to me, like, what is it? Why, do you, why don't you just do the work? And I was like, why don't I do the work? I, I know the work. That's why when you test me, I, I pass. Like, why do I, like, you're asking me why I don't do the work? Why are you making me do the work when I don't need to do it? That's what I would say to them. Like, I already noticed that. I answered it. So what, what is, you know what I mean? But that was one thing that I learned about life was that, or about school education. It's not so much what you're learning, but the process of learning how to learn that you're trying to grasp. Because if you can grasp how to learn anything, in any situation, in any way, you can learn anything at any time. You know what I mean? And nothing can stop you. And so when I was playing in high school, I focused more about, about understanding the process of learning. And and one of the things I do look back and regret is like, um, <clears throat> I now understand what the importance were those, those tests were and it, or those assignments. It was just because in, in life, you have assignments all the time. You have these tasks you need to do and stuff and so if you're not able to prioritize your tasks or you're not able to manage your time and everything like that then you're you're not going to um get good results you don't remember me but you dropped off the steam us from several off seats to my sister in the east and okay now i i know exactly who you are and and in some ways i was like you were in saint lucia and you didn't get steam for yourself but no i know 
So I hope you had a good time in seeing the show with your family, uh, Breast Cancer Journal. And I hope everything's going with your with your journey and everything like that, and you're staying healthy. Um, so, you know what? I was talking about one thing, then I got into another, got into, I got to get back on track. So, talking about the two things that I dislike. I hate when I go to the store and they don't want, oh, that was the story I wanted to tell before I got into that, and that is it. So, when I was younger, right, I I um, dropped out of school. I didn't drop, well, yeah, I dropped out of school at least made me stop going because I wasn't going to enough classes even though I was passing but um, I worked for my uncle and he uh, ran a sewing machine shop and so I used to at, at 15 at 15 I was managing uh, a, a sewing machine store so I worked there all day by myself a lot of times he was in and out and stuff so I would manage the sales I would sell sewing machines I would fix sewing machines um, <clears throat> do all those like computer crap and stuff. Yeah, I was really good at computers. So everybody would have me come in and fix their computer and stuff like that. So um, I did that. So one of the things he would do, right, is he would come to me, and especially always on payday, he would do this. And he would throw in an extra 50. Now, I love my uncle. And I hate taking from people that I love. Right? Or, I hate taking things from people that I don't need from people that I love. So unless I really need the money, I'm not taking it. I'll be like, give it back. You know what I mean? Or at least at that time, that's how I was. Now I'm different. Um, and 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 it's because of him because he would teach me this. He would he would throw an extra fifty or an extra hundred onto the bill or onto the amount that he would give me. So I would count it and be like, you know, Uncle Paul, you, you, this is too much. Here, here's it back. And he'd be like, no, 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 this for you. And I would be like, kind of like trying to be polite and say, I like, no, no, take it, take it, take it. No, it's not mine. I don't want it. You know what I mean? And then I would give it back. And then I would go through this series of remorse. Like, fuck, why did I give that hundred bucks back? He he just gave it to me. Like, I should have just, you know what I mean? And I would say, and I would realize I would need the money for something. And I would come back to him and be like, oh, Paul, you know what a hundred dollars gave me? Do you think I can stop? And I would be like, fuck no. It's in my pocket now. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, you had that chance to get that money. And, um, you know, you, um, you blew it. And so now, and he taught me this. He said, listen, anytime someone gives you money, you take it. Don't ask questions. Don't try to be nice, this and this and that. Because you never know if you're really going to need that money. There's a reason why that person's giving you money. And just wait till you see what the reason is that you're getting it. And if you decide if you need that money for that reason or not. And if you want, you can always give it back. But once you say no, you can't go back and ask for it again. You know what I mean? And so... A lot of times I just say yes to things because I, I, I want to see where it's leading to. And then I know I can say no and walk away. You know what I mean? Like just because you say yes doesn't mean you're committed for the complete journey. At any time, you can pass the chips and say, hey, look, I don't like where, where this is going. I'm out of here. You know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah. So from now on, I always take money. Anytime someone offers. And sometimes they look at me like, oh, my God, he took it. <laughs> I'm like. Oh, yeah, because some people I offer you money thinking that you're not going to take it. It's happened so many times with me. And then when I take it, the look on their face like, oh, my God, he took it and put it in his pocket and didn't even say anything. I was just like, thank you. <laughs> it's like, what? He took it? This guy doesn't need the money. Why did he take the money? Because you offered me the money. And that's why I took it. And now I, I can decide if I want to keep it or if I don't. And I think, you know what I mean? More people need to take money when it's offered to them. Because, you know, sometimes you, you never know when God's trying to send you a blessing. And you reject that blessing and turn it down. That's, I don't know. I don't know enough about um, God's work to, to say, speak for him. But I know if I was in God's position and I was constantly giving people gifts and, and sort of blessings, and they were turning around and saying, nah, nah, I don't need it. Nah, nah, I don't need it. Then I wouldn't give you more. And I wouldn't make the blessings bigger because you don't need it. You know what I mean? So this is where I think sometimes God's saying, like, you need to put your pride aside. You know what I mean? Because when I was younger with my pride, that was kind of saying, oh, no, of course, okay, I don't need it. I have money. I got to say it. But a lot of times I did need money. A lot of times I was broke. You know what I mean? But your pride is you're worried about what people think and what they're gonna say. People know the truth. You know, even when you're when you're um, 
how you fit. You have no money and you're faking it. Like trying to make people know. You know I mean, not everybody, but there will be some that know. And they're not going to come to you and be like, hey, we know you're faking it and it's obvious. And blah, 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 blah. no, they're just going to laugh at you behind your back. And so, you know, I was having a conversation with them the other day and I told them, I said, I don't want to have people have these kind of impressions about me. And I have kind of like no control of it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want people to think, uh, oh, I'm tired. I forgot where I was going. Anyway, point is, take money when money is given to you. Don't turn down blessings. You know, decide later if you really want it. That's, that's the whole point of what I was trying to say with that. So with that, getting back to what I was originally saying, which is the two things that I hate businesses do, is one, they close early. Because you never know. Like a lot of times I'll come in the store before it closes and they'll turn me down and I'm ready to spend like a shitload of money. And I'm kind of like, all right, next. You know what I mean? Like, it's not my problem. And so, uh, yeah, these guys miss out. You know, I always think, like, if I'm in business, two minutes, as long as I'm there, even if the door is after close, I'm, I'll still take your business as long as it is. And then, so what? I have to stay later, like, for 20 minutes. You know what I mean? But I, look how much money I made in the business. Like, like, to me, your business never closes. Never ever. No, no business ever really closes. You know what I mean? There's, so to me, it's like you know, you always got to be available. So yeah, I hate that. And um, what was it? Closing early. There was something else I hate. I have to put some shit. I forgot about it. <laughs> so Renee's asking me to tell the story about how I got into CMOS. And so I got into CMOS pretty much like how everybody gets into CMOS. You start taking it and you start liking it. And you start seeing the results and you become more passionate about it. But this is one thing I want to say that a lot of people don't really say. And I, I see it's something that's common with a lot of people getting into CMOS. We all tried the so called fake CMOS, which I honestly don't think it's fake. I just think it's just commercially grown CMOS, which makes it not the same, it doesn't look the same quality, and it's not dry to the, you know, a good consistency, uh, or good moisture contact. That being said, it's still real CMOS, it came out of the ocean, you know what I mean? I see where they're, they're doing this. You know, <laughs> with all this talk about full grown CMOS, and with the amount of CMOS that I sell, that we sell, the amount of time that I've been in the CMOS industry, You'd think I would see even just like one operation operating. You know what I mean? That's how I know there's nothing there because I don't know if anybody realizes this, but these guys that you think are growing fake CMOS, they're not hiding the fact that they're growing that, that CMOS. You know what I mean? Like there's no operation operating on the cover of darkness. Like shh, shh, they can never know what was grown in a pool. Like those companies that are growing in the pool, they're almost touting the fact that they're growing it in a pool and that it, because in, in a lot of industries, that's considered better. You know what I mean? It's safer, you know, it's less pathogens, it's less this, more controlled environment. You know what I mean? Uh, for, from a commercial's perspective, they, they need consistency. So growing something in a tank or growing something in a closed environment is more desirable for them. And so these companies would be promoting this. You know what I mean? They wouldn't be hiding this. Only our sort of community has this negative notion towards fake CMOS. Everybody else in the world, they'd look at you and be like, what are you talking about? There is no fake CMOS. There is absolutely no fake CMOS. It's all CMOS, it's real. It's not like it's made with a different material. In order for something to be fake, it has to be not of what it really originally was. That's what makes it fake. That's why a flower made out of plastic is fake. That's why, uh, uh, but a flower, a flower made out of a flower is not a fake flower. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was grown naturally in the waters. Like, that's how they do it. They just do it on a huge scale. And so when you're doing anything on a huge scale, the level of quality goes down. You just, you can't give the same care and, and, and attention to detail as one would get when you're, like, say, harvesting same us in St. Lucia. Harvesting same us in St. Lucia is a 
completely different operation than say harvesting it in a, a country like Indonesia or a country like Vietnam or something like that, where they're producing this stuff on a on a commercial scale. Like these guys are producing it like by the megaton. You know what I mean? Like thousands of tons. Like you order, you can order five tons for them. You couldn't order a ton from someone in Singapore. It would take them a month to put that that order together easily. And it would you would you would have to know so many people on the island to get a thousand pounds here, five hundred pounds here. But you know what I mean? To build that up to, to like you know ten tons or whatever. I've seen people like you know offer like prices on. Like if you're offering a price on five tons, like if you buy five tons, this is how much it is, and then you're selling five tons all the time. You know what I mean? That means you have to have twenty tons. It's not possible, at least not now. You know, hopefully,、uh, you know, we start building some infrastructure that allows us to consolidate the work、um, in certain areas that are causing the.、Um, That is not causing, but it's, it's it's what's holding the price. You know, what's keeping the price high up here is because of the way they do things. You know, everything's done by hand. Everything's done like by an individual. And so, whereas in a lot of these other countries, they're doing a lot of the stuff by machine, or they're just doing it fast and not and not really sort of giving that、um, attention to detail. Now, that's not to say that none of their steam moss is like that, because I'm sure there are black small groups. That produce their sea moss on a more solid, small scale. But I want to say, all sea moss coming from this area is is, is bad. That's not true. There's a lot of people I know, or I've spoken to in the past, that have used sea moss from Indonesia, Vietnam,、um, and other countries, and you know their customers are happy with their product. You know what I mean? It, no one's complaining. No one. Everybody's. I mean, this is what I I, I kind of struggle to be with. It's like, okay, so you get your sea moss from there, right? Great. A lot of people don't like it. Okay, great. But the people that are taking it and like and using it are happy with it, and they're getting results from it. So how is it bad? You know what I mean? Like you can't you can't just come up and say this is bad without without showing why it's bad. You know what I mean? The people are getting results from it. You know what I mean? So you know, I started with that bad sea moss. Our, our sea moss that was bought at,、um, you know, Caribbean corners or whatever. I had this lady, this Jamaican lady, making the sea moss, and so she was buying the stuff. And when I got more into the sea moss, I was like, oh, so you know, where are you getting your sea moss from? This and that, because like everybody else, you know, you start doing your background, you start realizing there's different degrees of quality. Now, in the beginning, I looked at the surface information. And so I had the same sort of、um, beliefs as a lot of other people that are in the sea moss industry or business, you know, just about the quality of the sea moss and oh, it's it's coming from Vietnam, it's got to be fake or low quality or whatever. And so when I found out that that's where she was getting the sea moss from, and from my research, I found out there was better sea moss. I was kind of like, look, if you know, oh,、well, I missed the step here. I found out some of the best sea moss was coming from Saint Lucia, and I knew. That you know, I have connections to go to Saint Lucia. I'm going there often, right? And I'm going to start going more in the future. So I said to the lady that was making the job, I was like, "Look, if if I'm able to get you better sea moss, are you interested in it?" And she was like, "Yeah, for sure." Because I was like, "Because how much are you buying it here, and how much are you, you know, what quantities are you buying?" And she's like, "And this was crazy. She was buying four ounce packages at a certain price, and it was like astronomical. And when you add it up to the pound." You know what I mean? It's like I don't even want to do the math, but it's 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 a lot more. Let's just say that. And so she was kind of saying like, you know, it's not really cost effective for me too much. You know, if I could get it cheaper, it would be better. And I was like, well, you know, maybe we can work something out because,、um, you know, I know if you get it by the pound, it's going to be a lot better and、um, like better on the price. And I said, and I have a link to get it. You know, I'm going to go and try and score some in Saint Lucia. So the original plan for me、uh, was never to start a business on it because I just was in real estate. I was doing other things. I had I had a good life. I had no reason to get into CMO. Like it's not like oh let's start this and lose money. Even for me at that time, I wouldn't say that CMO was really trending yet. It was getting. It was sort of like building that momentum because people were talking about it. Was getting around. You know what I mean?、Uh, my buddy told me about it. He was in England, and he was showing all these foods, and I was like, "What the hell is this?" Like, 
you, you've got vegan on me? And he's like, going, oh, yeah, I'm all Dr. Sadie. And, you know, this food is really good. And, you know, we're going to do alkaline and, it, you know, it's electrifying your body. And it was great, you know, great pitch. So that's where I got trying the CMOP stuff. Like, I always knew about CMOP. But, you know, no one talks about in the community about taking it all the time, every day as a part of his diet. And so that's where he introduced me saying, yeah, if you take this kind of like every day and eat it just a raw form, not the drink, then, you know what I mean? You're going to get a lot of nutritional benefits. So I tried it, loved it, blew my mind. And um, so I'm now asking this lady, like, if I can get you the sea moss, you know, at a good price, would you, would you take it? And she was like, yeah, hell yeah. So the plan was originally I was going to go down there, procure 50 pounds, and um, I was going to sell 50 pounds to her, or sorry, 25 pounds to her. And um, she was going to use that to make her business. And then I was going to give her 20, and I was going to sell her the 25 pounds at my cost. Like whatever it cost me to go down there and bring it back, you know what I mean? That was what she was going to pay. And the agreement was I give her another 25 pounds, and that's the CMOS that, like, she makes my CMOS from that, and you just make the gel for me, right? So it was almost like the payment for making the gel was for her to get the CMOS for her at cost. And it kind of, I know it sounds complicated, but in the end, it really bound us up because basically she got CMOS at cost, you know what I mean? And all she had to do was make a guy gel, which is she was already making, and she didn't have to use her own gel. The guy and me would give her the gel, and I got free gel, <laughs> you know what I mean? For probably like at least a couple of years. And who knows how long 25 pounds could last for. So I get down here and I start trying to um, locate um, someone that I can get CMOS from. Now, contrary to what people believe, there is no CMOS, like guy holding CMOS, like CMOS farms this way. They're, they're you know, unless you know someone, um, which at the time I didn't really know a lot of people, it's not easy to sort of locate these guys. Nowadays, it's different. We have the CMOS Fires Club. We have other groups where a lot of these guys are hanging out and you can just keep them in the dark. Like two, three years ago, you could not, it was not to say you could not speak to a farmer, but it was very difficult to find direct farmers, right? Or very difficult to find people selling CMOS that, that can export it. Because here's the thing, not every CMOS farmer, not every harvester knows what they're doing when it comes to exporting. There's a lot of people that, you know, do stuff like they they put the CMOS in the box and then they weigh the box with the CMOS in it and count that as your 100 pounds without reducing the box. Some put them in without even in a lot, any liner, which is crazy. And if the FDA kind of pulls it in the box and sees that it's got no lining, I don't, who knows what they'd say? I know I wouldn't. I would be like, this thing contaminated. You know what I mean? Plus, if a box versus open, which they do all the time, your sea moss is all over the freaking place, right? I've, I've heard stories of people getting their shipments lost, you know what I mean? Because the guy didn't fill out the information correctly. All kinds of stuff. So, um, you know, you, you have to be mindful of that. So, hey, good morning, XLED. Um, yeah, so I had trouble finding someone. A lot of times what would happen was people would come and they would be like, oh, yeah, 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 I know someone in CMOS. Ah, da, how much do you want at CMOS? I'd be like, oh, yeah, this is But I really want to meet the farmer and I want to talk to him because I want to know where I'm getting the product from and how it's sourced and, you know, I want to learn all that kind of it, like issues, right? So they'd be like, yeah, 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 no problem, no problem, no problem. And then they come back and be like, hey, hey, hey I got the farmer for you. Hey, what's up, you know, so how much you want? Uh, yeah. Okay, what are you willing to pay for it? I'm like, what am I willing to pay? Why am I talking to you about this? Like, where's the farmer? I thought I was meeting the farmer. Like, you know, like, like pretty much no one wanted to help me unless they were getting something out of it. And they wanted to make sure what they were getting before they really put the, you know, the, it was stuck, you know. And it's like, like, screw you guys. Like, what? You can't just show me something. Like, you have to make money from it. You know, guys, sometimes don't be looking to monetize every single action you do. You know, sometimes you need to just be, like, not, I don't want to say generous, but just helpful to other people. You know what I mean? That's where your blessings are coming from. And they're not coming from these people. Like these people, when I, when I help someone, I know more, more than likely I'm 
never they're not gonna get an opportunity to do something for me you know what i mean and even if they did they might not and that's okay i'm not doing it what i'm doing for them to get something back from them you know what i mean so anyways i kind of got off track here so yeah the no one would help me find it and then one day um you know i had i heard like a voice it was probably the holy spirit just kind of saying to me look go go rent a car you know what i mean go call nigel and go rent a car and see what happens so i call nigel this is a friend of my dad's who rents cars so i call him and i'm like yo you know i need to rent a car and then the voice as i'm talking to him says ask him about the farm and if he knows anything about sumac and he knows anybody in sumac so i ask him and he's like yeah 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 i know a guy you know he's cool you know blah 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 introduce him to him no problem and I was like, all right, cool, right? He's like, yeah, yeah, this guy will help you out. He'll take care of you. Don't worry, he's a good guy, right? And, you know, a little backstory is this is not my first time in St. Lucia. I come to St. Lucia a lot. And most of the times I stay in the north end of the island. My family likes to be in the resorts and stuff. And so to get there, you, you need transportation. And there's a guy that usually would drive me. Different guys all the time, right? So he sends the guy over. And we start talking and we're vibing and, you know, hanging out. He's cool. I'm cool. La, la, la. We're getting the thing. And um, he starts like, you know, after we get it, I think we talked a little bit to CMOS. He says, yeah, I'm going to get the CMOS, this and that. And then he, so he starts asking me some questions, right? And he's like, hey, so you're from Toronto. You know, I had a family that was here like a while back, a couple of years ago. I don't know. Maybe you might know them. Blah, blah, blah. And so he starts describing this family, right? Oh, it's this my guy. He had a, came down with his sister and he had two kids. And at the time, I'm like, it didn't really register. I'm just like, all right, I have no idea who the fuck this is. I have no idea who this guy is talking about, right? And then he says, yeah, and, his, and, and the mother was a social worker. And so my mom's like, she's not really a social worker. What she does, she works in the community. Um, she operates a like wish with a bunch of organizations that deal with youth mental health so she helps people that are you know dealing with uh problems issues with reintegrating into society because of their mental state and the, and the challenges that they have in life you know what i mean she's just she's a, basically her job is to help people get better in life you know I mean? it's an amazing job and she does it really well um so i hate when i do this i forget where i was talking about Good morning, Matthew. What's up, Bull City? Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Now I remember. So he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, you know this lady. It's just so I'm like, this is me. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm that guy you're talking about. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, like that's my mom. My mom's a social worker. My mom, you know what I mean? I go, I was here like a couple of years ago. He's like, really? That was you? <laughs> and what's funny is because I think I had lost weight. I was really bigger before. And so that was the first thing he said. He's like, you don't look the same. You look different. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's me, right? So anyways, we get to talking. And um, we, you know, he says he can get the CMOS in the bus. So we were like, yeah, I can definitely, like, check it out. And um, so the idea was we were going to buy some CMOS, send it back and see what happens, right? But when I went out and I started hanging out with the guy, we started talking to the people in the CMOS and the connections, you know what I mean? And and just the way he spoke to them and the way they spoke to him and stuff, I began to realize, I was like, this guy has some links. Like, real, like, serious links. And so I was researching this, the industry, and I'm like, you know, people are crying for this thing right now. Like, people are going bananas. And um, this guy is in the center of it all, and he knows everybody. And everybody loves him. So I was like, so I pull him aside. I'm like, dude, let's let's do a business. And he's like, seriously? I'm like, yeah, let's let's like start our own farms. Let's hire some divers. Let's start exporting the sea moths. You you know what to do, and I know how to export it, and I know how to sell it. So I was like, you do what you do, and I do what I do, and we'll like make lots of money. And you know, I wouldn't say we made lots of money, but we definitely have changed both of our lives for the better. And, you know what I mean, uh, I know my life has improved and I hope that his life has improved too through CMOS. 
And not only has our lives improved, but the people around us, the people that we work with, I'm watching their lives improve and, and, and prosperity come to them and opportunity. You know, I have one friend that's like, you know, he's building a house off the business that we were doing. And what's crazy is before we started working with him, he could barely rub two sticks together. Well, I shouldn't say that because I don't know. But I'll say this. He wasn't building his house before and he wanted to. And he, he wasn't able, like, he wasn't in a position to do it. And then when he started working with us, suddenly he's getting these opportunities to make that happen. You know what I mean? And that's one of the things that I love about CMOS. And, you know, I am so passionate about being in here is, is the amount of change that it gives people. And, and 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 the opportunities that it can bring and and how it can totally change and affect their life and for me those kind of things that's what drives me that's what gives me like that was why i was in real estate it was because i would get a rush out of watching everybody be happy and um seeing them in their new home and and, and watching their kids run up and be like that's my room and that nah, nah. because i remember being a kid and, and being exposed to new things you know what i mean and how i felt you know so allison says hey hey look at you living it up in paradise i know huh but it's, it's raining so and check it out i got my own private pool bomba simos live <laughs> Yeah, every room in this hotel has their own little private plunge pool. So that's pretty cool. But, so yeah, so that that's kind of like the short story about us getting into CMOS. So from there, you know what I mean? It just kind of, it, it just bred a life of its own. You know what I mean? Um, we started shipping a lot of CMOS and it just kept growing. Uh, my dad stepped in at one point, which was crazy because my dad, not to say that he's cheap, I don't know. I, I'm sure if I asked him for it, he would have given it to me. But there was a point where, you know, not to say we could either make or break it, but it was like a, at a significant point on which we leveled up the business. And my dad came in there with a cash infusion and basically helped us scale very quickly because, like, I don't know if anybody knows, but we started this money, this business with like almost little to no money. You know what I mean? We, we did not have the money that I would have normally would like to have in order to start a business. We, we bootstrapped this thing, like, for sure. I was running shit off credit cards and transferring this and borrowing money for this and then and that. And so, you know, you you do what it, whatever it takes to make whatever you need happen, happen. And that's how we kind of pushed it through. Same as, that's how we pushed Shane Lee from Pumas. And now we're on our second year and like, Things are really opening up for us. And um, now it's getting into a position where we really got to sort of organize the team, organize the corporate structure and stuff like that. Like I'm beginning to realize that because we're not at a certain level of readiness, we're missing out on a lot of opportunities that would probably would have came our way. And so I, I don't want my partner to miss out on these opportunities. Do you know what I mean? And so I want to make sure that we're our company is in a position so that we can grow with everybody else and we're not kind of one of those companies that get like left behind like I, I i don't think we need to be number one you know i'll save that space for someone else who, who wants it more but definitely we want to be in the top five or, or we don't want to be left behind that's for sure that's one thing i'm going to make sure we never get left behind and that we're we're, we're leading in the pack with other people you know, like I said, I don't care to be first. Sometimes first is not always the best. I, I prefer to be second or third, and especially in business. But um, it is what it is, you know. So I I know that was a little long-winded story, but that's kind of a brief history on how we got started with Solution Seamless Company and grew it to where it is today. Wow, that thing makes a lot of noise. I think I might even go in the plunge pool later. Let's see how warm it is. It's probably going to be pretty warm because um, the rain, the rain down here is warm, right? And so when you... Uh, 
my screen there a little bit. So when there's lots of rain, obviously, it's going to warm up the water. <coughs> I don't know. What time is it? 7.30. 7.20. Uh, I wonder when everybody else is going to get up so we can go to breakfast. I'm ready. I'm ready to go to for breakfast. I'm ready to lounge in on the beach. I'm ready to get my drink on. I'm going to relax here for two weeks and not think about work. Oh, fuck. I can never not think about work. But uh, I'm going to try and do less work than I normally do. That makes sense. All right, Renee, thank you. Renee says, thanks for your uh, your time and the great info. Enjoy your day at work. You know what I mean? Work really hard. And, you know, if you don't like your job, think of a plan on how to get out of it. You know, there's too many people that are stuck in situations where they don't need to be. And they think that they're stuck there. They think that they can't get out there. But the reality is you have not spent enough time figuring out a way to get out of it. You know what I mean? That's why you're still in it. If you were to devote enough time, who knows how much time that is? Just enough time to getting out of your situation, you would eventually figure out a way to get out of your situation. Partly the reason why some people are still in this situation is you you, you say to them, oh, you know, you're in this situation. Yeah, but, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. You know what I mean? I'm stuck. And then you got to ask yourself, well, how much time did you really think about, you know, because there's times where I said, well, did you think about this? And they're like, oh, no, I never thought about that. Actually, that might work. It's like, yeah, because you didn't think <laughs> enough time. You know what I mean? Like if you spend five hours trying to solve a solution, you're going to you're going to have a better answer than if you spent an hour trying to solve that solution. You know, it's just common sense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Brought a drone. <laughs> I'm excited for that. I, I got. I'm gonna take some really good drone footage. I actually had it out uh, on the resort, testing it out, flying it out here, and it goes out. It goes pretty far, and so um, yeah. I'm going to test it when I get back to my house in the south, and I'm going to see if I can... I think I might be able to make it to the sea boss farm. It'll just be, have to be challenging because I'll have to get really low to the ground, like close to the water, so that I don't have to get subjected to the winds. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe on a day where, you know... Although it's not too many days where it's not windy. In my area, pretty windy place. <sighs> so, let me know if anybody has any questions or anything you want to know about me or talk about or ask about St. Lucia or Seamoss. You know, I had some fruit here. I'd bring some fruit out and get the birds to come and eat for you guys. That's what's cool about this um, hotel is that you can open up all the windows and the doors in here and the birds will fly in and out of the room. Even some of the rooms, they're partly open concept where half the part of the property is outside. Um, the birds just really fly in and out of the place. You do. Know? <sighs> There's actually a hotel, I think it's at Jade Mountain, there's a hotel on this island here that has no walls, or not walls, no, it only has three walls, it doesn't have a back wall, your whole back is, is, is open to the elements and stuff like that, it's like ultimate seclusion, and um, I don't know, luxury, would be the word. Hmm. Stretching and doing all this stuff. I'm so tired. I think I might take a plunge in the plunge pool just to wake me up. Because it is pretty, it's not heated. 
So it's, um, you know, it gets pretty cool in there. And I've been taking a lot of um, cold, I don't, I don't say cold baths, because it's really, I just go in the pool, I jump in my pool and I swim in it. And then I, um, the pool is not heated, so it's like eight, 17, 18 degrees Celsius. And so it's pretty cold. Wakes me up. Oh, definitely puts a shock to the system. And so I would um, do the same for the quarter, I think. Shock wake me up. But I don't know. I'm curious what I'm going to have for dinner tonight. Because it's um, today is going to be our first day of all inclusive. So E, 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 make sure we get our money to work. <laughs> Horrible. Gain so much weight. I don't know, loser. Once I get to Mola Chic, I, I, there's a hill and stuff that I do a lot of walking with, but I'll, I'll burn all those calories off. No problem. Ugh. All right, well, I don't know if I should stay on longer or just, like, call it quits and get ready. I think I'm going to give it, uh, I'll give it to 7.30. And if no one really comes on and wants to talk, I will. Ooh, I will go back and, um, I was going to say go back to sleep. <laughs> But no, I'll probably get up, um, get dressed, uh, take a plunge in the punch pool, and then read a book. I actually have a really good book that I want to um, read. Um, it's not by a really well-known author, but I like the title of it. It was called How to Convince um, Someone Something in 90 Seconds. And so the reason why I got that book is because... There's often times, whether it's me or I see someone else, where you're in a situation where you meet someone and you have to sell them on an idea, you know what I mean? And, um, or you have to get them to be agreeable on an idea. And you got to be able to effectively describe that idea and, and be able to answer questions in a short period of time. Similar to like a pitch that you do on say Shark's Tank, Dragon's Den, or like, or what m most people would call like an elevator pitch. And so I want to get very good at being able to describe our, not only our business, but what we're trying to accomplish with our business and what our goals are in, in under a minute and a half. And just be like, this is what we're doing. This is our plan. This is the, because if you can uh, speak, um, I don't want to say the word effectively, but if you can speak on a topic or a subject that you're proficient about and you know it and, and, and you're sort of like to the point, you're more likely to get a positive result. If you go back and watch Shark Tank or Dragon's Ends or any of those shows where people are pitching uh, their idea to someone else to get an investment, you'll notice that the pitches that do well or do the best are the ones where the, the story flows. And it's information and it's the right information at the right time. If you do that in the right way, most time people will never ask a question. They'll just be like, where do I sign up? Because you've answered all the important questions. You've hit all the trigger points that are going to make them say yes. But if you come in and you don't have a plan and you're like, well, I think I'm going to do this. And, you know, if this works, we're going to probably consider this and you know, this has this, and, you know, I'm not going to really tell you too much about it, but that's what it is. You know what I mean? Like, all of a sudden, the guy's like, well, what is this? What is this made of? How did this work? Why is this beneficial to me? Why, why, why want to sign up? You know what I mean? Sometimes people didn't even give a, a clear enough picture of why that person should invest. Like, what's in it for them? They All they talk about is what's in it for the person that's asking for them. No one cares about that. No one wants to help you. They want to help themselves, you know what I mean? Or they, and I mean, as rude as it sounds, like, I shouldn't say that. I mean, people probably do want to help, because I do want to help. But my point of saying, like, what I'm trying to say is, like, 
you need to come from the perspective that like no one's going to give you something for nothing no one's going to do stuff for you for free it's it's always you have to give them something and almost like you have to give them something first you know what i mean like and and that's what's called the law of reciprocation one of the things that i do in business is i go out first and give something especially if i want something and i'm coming into the situation that i want i find out what that person wants and i give it to them even before i ask for anything in return right because now that i've given it to them right what they want in some ways the law says that they have to give me what i want it's an exchange you get any mean but if you try to give them something that they don't want then there's no exchange and they're not they're not going to be as like yes you know what i mean and so i always try to say okay what do you want i uh, here's what you want like and uh, and i have guys doing it to me too especially when they're trying to like pitch me for money and stuff because a lot of people are trying to invest in the business and i tell them we're not taking investors like we'll take a loan you know we'll allow you to give us money and we'll pay you back but there's not going to be some of this like you give me a certain amount of money and now you get to ride with us for the rest of eternity <laughs> you know what i mean that's zawa that's not how i want this business. like we'll form a new business and we'll do that to eternity but the journey the, the same pollution simon's journey is really only meant for me and my partner and i've just, i've been pretty adamant about that i tell everybody that i don't want anybody coming in between us i don't want anybody splitting us up I don't want us to have to like fight over this other person that we brought in. You know what I mean? Me and him get along perfect and I don't want any more cuts in that kitchen. We're we're already making a you know, a smorgasbord of meal. We're making a fancy feast. And we don't want anybody coming in there and saying, "Oh, well that's not how you do the temperature." And that's you know, I mean like, you know what? Let let us form a new business and you can tell us what to do all day long and we'll do it with with with, with happiness, you know. Or with the, um, I don't want to say pride, but you know what I mean. Like I, I'll, we'll be gun ho to do it and form a new business, but to to come into something that we've already built and we already have, it's almost like I don't need to be rude, but in a lot of ways, we don't need anybody. You know what I mean? We are where we where we are, and you know we might need to take a, a financial infusion for a bit, but we'll we'll give that back. You know. Because that's how it is. That's how it's going to be. And the rain stopped. And I forgot what I was talking about. Already. Such is life. Mm. Well, I think I was talking about business and just giving people what they want and making sure that you. You know, oh yeah, talking about so getting back to what I was saying. So if I can learn how to effectively pitch our ideas to someone in under ninety seconds, that's really going to help us open up a lot of doors for us, not only for us but like for the people that we're working with and stuff. And like, you know, we're trying to help other groups get formalized and and like get into the industry. You know what I mean? And so one of the things I want to able to try and do in the future is to be able to work with these these groups these communities and help them to get funding fun, uh, funding financing help them to get the tools that they need to grow their business so that you know um they can work more efficiently and so that they can produce more cmos with less work that's sort of my goal uh like i guess my personal goal to try and do for the industry down here is let's try to work with people to help develop ways so that they can do They can produce more CMOS with less work, because part of the problem right now I see is that the CMOS is too low. All right, we need to be paying for the work that they're doing on in Saint Lucia specifically, because I can't speak for any other island because I've never been there. But the work that they're specifically doing in Saint Lucia, I personally believe that the price that we are buying the CMOS at is too low. You know what I mean? And I feel that we need to be paying more for it now. As much as I like, what I feel in, in a lot of ways is the market doesn't doesn't care. That's for them, it, it doesn't matter. So, 
I can't change what I feel or I can't change what it is. You know what I mean? How do I adjust it? How do I, um, what can I do to change it slightly to make it work for, for, for us or for me or whoever? And that's where I came up with a solution where it was like, okay, if we can produce more CMOS for the same amount of work, then effectively they're not working as hard as they were before. And so the price of the CMOS can balance itself out. And so that's sort of my overall commitment for the next while, year, however long it takes, is to help um, help St. Lucian's communities um, build their um, build their organizations or their groups or whatever they have in such a way so that they can um, provide CMOS at a, at a lower cost, right? And then by them producing the CMOS at a lower cost, it, it allows them to keep more of the profit that they have. Because right now, a lot of their profit goes into the different inputs that they need in order to produce the CMOS, whether it's like drying beds or ropes or, um, you know, uh, gas for the boat to get out there. Like, especially if you're a diver, you know, and you're diving for this wild stock, wild craft is CMOS that everybody loves so much or whatever. Um, you know, that's, that, that's a guy that dives for that. He has to go down in the water. He has to, you know, drive his boat out there. Gas is expensive. It's getting expensive more and more. So these guys, you know, every day, these guys are making less than less money and they already weren't making a lot of money to begin with. So this puts a further strain on, on their livelihood. You know what I mean? And it really doesn't need to be that way because some of you guys are taking these products and you're paying, you know, under 20 bucks for it and you're selling it for 90 70 i see the price you know what i mean and it and it's uh, i don't want to say it's uh, i don't want to say anything negative about it but i'll say this it doesn't have to be that way like you don't need to 3x your your profit you know what i'm saying to make money you you can make less and you can do certain things that will help um help sell the CMOS at a, at a good value. Like there's some prices where we, we almost make no money on, right? But because on the other amounts, we, it balances out. It all averages. Some stuff you're going to have to sell for cheap, just to get it out your door, just to flip it. You know what I mean? And by flipping it and, and selling that stuff cheap, and I don't want to say cheap, but giving it an affordable price, it allows you to buy more CMOS. And then, you know, when you buy more CMOS, you can negotiate a better price. If you negotiate that better price, your, your price for CMOS gets better. One of the things I see happening now is people are buying five, 10 pounds and they want to pay rock bottom prices. They want to pay the same price that someone pays if they bought a thousand pounds. And I don't think that's right. I don't think that like doing that is just going to upset the market and it's going to make it difficult for the farmer in the long term because it will create an unbalanced situation where supply is, is like the purchase of the supply is not is not consistent. And so you need in order to grow wealth, you need to have consistent cash flow coming in every day. You know what I mean? If one day the money's there and the next day the money's not, it, it's going to create an imbalance. And if you're selling the CMOS for less, like, say you're selling the CMOS uh, for the same price that you're selling the guy to... Um, you're selling CMOS to the guy... You're selling sell, um, 20 pounds of CMOS to the guy for the same price that you would sell 1,000 pounds for. The guy that's buying 1,000 pounds is going to start realizing he doesn't need to buy all that CMOS because he can get it at a cheap price. And so he'll just buy it when he needs it. Like, what people don't realize is, like, a lot of these people that are the big buyers, they sit on the thing. Sometimes for months, you know what I mean? So why tie up, you know, 10, 20,000 US dollars for three months when you, you can spend a thousand dollars monthly, you know, or a couple thousand and, and it works better for, for the, like the seller. But what happens is that the, the supplier is not getting consistent sales now, you know what I mean? And, and it's, and, it, and the price is not reflecting the frequency. And so one thing people don't realize is that in any business, there's fixed costs. Okay. You have your rent, you have your, this, you have your, that, 
whether you make a sale or not, these fixed costs have to be paid, right? And and so let's let's give it in a month time frame. So how much money you generate in a month is going to determine how much profit you really make because if you generate less money, more of that money is going to go to bills than it is going to you. You know what I mean? And so you need to you know stay ahead of that curve and 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 sell enough to make sure. That not only are the fixed、um, expenses paid for, but that there's a little left over for profit, right? And if these guys are doing a sale once every week or every other week, or you know this and that, it, it's it's not consistent, and 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 it's not going to it's not going to help them. It's going to hurt them. So I have a lady with a nine-year-old child that has a low immune system, asthma, and needs iron. How much CMOS gel should she take, and should it be daily like adults? Okay, I'm going to give you a completely honest answer. I have no idea.、Um, what I've seen is that a lot of times people who sell CMOS act like they're medical medical practitioners, and we're not. You know what I mean?、Um, I can only give you my.、Um, Advice based on my own experience, and my experience doesn't match up with everybody. So the advice I give might not. I'm just putting this little disclaimer because I feel like a lot of times I watch people and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, it, this is gonna fix it. It's gonna fix everything."、And、it's like you, you don't know what it's gonna fix. You you think it's gonna fix that, but you don't know for sure. You know what I mean? And so what my advice would be is that I would tell you to start small. Maybe take two,、uh, the, the recommended dose. They say two to four tablespoons.、Uh, try that for a few days. See how they react to that, and if they feel comfortable, increase the dosage.、Um, I don't think there's any sort of affected limit that you should take. I think that our bodies would let us know when we've taken enough, and that we don't need to take as much CMOS. But I also think that you need to sort of monitor it, and you know, it's it's not something where you, the first time you take it, you take half a cup. You, you need to work up to half a cup so that you can take it. What's up, Kenya? Morning, morning. Let me see if I can get you to come talk to me because I have not seen your pretty face in too long, <laughs> and you know, this is one of the original OGs. That's Started from from day one with me, you know. I mean, someone that definitely this this business would not have happened without the the support and help and just、uh, like generosity, like the things that he did for me. You know what I mean? I will never forget and always be grateful for.、It. Just giving you your plug, bro. <laughs> Good morning. Hold on, let me turn the volume up. My phone. Yeah, that's why I said I have to get this guy on there. You know, <laughs> this brings back a lot of memories. Being this, this background, you know, sunrise conversations.、Um, I just caught the back end of what you were talking about, and I just wanted to jump in and kind of echo what you were saying.、Mm-hmm. It takes a long time to become a. Health practitioner, you know, it takes a lot of,、uh, I would say, commitment to your specific field. And there's a lot of people that are giving advice as if they are health professionals. Take it with a grain of salt, you know. <laughs>、um, and I had this thought the other day, and it was this: CMOS is an amazing product. It does a lot of things, but if you think CMOS only is going to cure every single thing in your body, and you continue to do the same things you were doing previously, you're not going to get the results that you expected.、Mm-hmm. So if I'm a constant drinker and I'm complaining of inflammation or、um, diet, like you know, liver issues and stuff like that, and I think. That I'm taking this CMOS is going to cure me from that. You need to stop drinking. You know what I mean?、Mm-hmm. 
in order to kind of find and see so it, it helps in combination with a lot of things like um also you gotta listen just like what you said check what your body's telling you your body if you start to feel nauseated i've heard of somebody that this one lady she loved the product but she says she so constipated all the time really she says it's amazing but she felt constipated but she's more in tune with her body so she stopped taking it mm -hmm. and i'm not gonna argue with this person and say you're doing it wrong you should be drinking more water you need it <laughs> you know, that's her experience like some people will have sensitivity to certain things you know um and, and, and it's quite interesting so you're absolutely right CMOS is an amazing product it does some amazing things I was having a conversation yesterday with my wife and and um, and I was telling her I said you know like remember when we made that CMOS and used it for your skin just like the best stuff ever when we put it in her hair when my wife went natural two years ago and in the middle of the recession, well, not recession. But, um, it was felt like a recession. <laughs> like, gee, like, everything's that, shut that's down. <laughs> that's what it feels like. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody lost money. <laughs> right. She, she noticed her hair, the texture, everything changed because of the, the CMOS gel. So, you know, um, I guess it's like you got to check it out. Like you said, you can start slow, a small amount, and see what works for you. It does work. Um, it is a neuroprotectant. I've given it to my neighbor, um, whose mother had dementia, mm -hmm. and it seemed like it really helped her mother, you know, um, to have less and less episodes. Um, I know it works for me as far as like if I have joint pain or something like that, I'm like, you know what? It's probably time to go make some gel and incorporate that into my smoothies and stuff. And um, and that you can instantly see the mobility. My father-in-law says the same thing. My mother-in-law swears by it. My mother-in-law actually, <laughs> this is the funny part. My mother-in-law is supported Alexio for over <laughs> I would say about a good year. Can you imagine? I used to see the thing. I'm like, why are you going to this this I was like, oh. was just like I just like what it does. I'm like, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know what? His gel I haven't tasted his gel, but when he's talked to me about his gel, like they spent a lot of time perfecting the gel. And he, it's almost like his recipe. Because even when he, like, he talked to me, he's like, bro, like, you know, because we were talking about scaling at one point, And he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. How am I going to replicate this? Like, you, you have no idea how hard it is for, I, I, like he, I think he said he spent like a month teaching his staff how to make the gel the right way. Like, like it's perfection. And that's something like battled last night when we were talking late last night. He sent me a message of this dude. Um, I'm not going to say his name, but some dude is out there basically, you know, and I get it, his marketing tactic or whatever, but he's using the transformation. He's using that company to basically say, well, they sell theirs in an eight ounce jar. This is the price. Here's mine. It's much better. And I almost want to call the guy and be like, bro, like you have no idea what you, yeah, you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, first of all, yes, you're giving more CMOS. But have you tested his CMOS? Have you even tried his CMOS? You have no idea what his CMOS tastes like. And yet you have the audacity to say, my CMOS is on the same level as his. You, you have no idea. Yeah. mother-in-law, and believe you me, if there's anybody that, I'll take my glasses off, if there's anybody that's close to what's going on with CMOS, I am one of them people, yeah. right? And, um, and... Good God have mercy. My mother-in-law loves Alexios Transformation Factory. Yeah. I am not, and I repeat, I salute him 
And that's why that time mm. I think I sent you a picture when I went to her house. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, damn it. Like, <laughs> but that could have been you. And, and that's the part. At the same time, it works for her. Yeah. It worked for her. She mm -hmm. loves the product and it works for her. And so, you know, that's really what you get to is like, hey, if you are, if you take the time and build your product, I don't, I'm not a gel selling person. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I, I don't do that. So, um, and for her, it's easy for her to take it. I've tasted the pineapple one here. Was it good? Her it's good. <laughs> so, I can see how people just go in, yeah, it's easy for them, they take a, a tablespoon, mm -hmm. uh, so take it and they're done, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and she loves it, and when she sees it going down like halfway, that woman go buy another three bottles, just yeah. like that, boom, boom, she yeah, bottles at a time. and it works, and, and, and this, yeah. you know what I mean? This is what I'm saying. Like, if someone's happy with your product and it works, you know what I mean? Like, how can you criticize, like, what he's doing and stuff? Yeah, and not only that, but, like, dude, like, I'll say it. Like, you know, his company compared, like, what he's doing compared to, like, what I, like that company's doing is, like, night and day. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're not shipping your product two days FedEx on a, on a, on a sub degree temperature plane to make sure that it stays frozen the whole time. You're taking a, 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 a risk. You know what I mean? You're not automatically reshipping out CMOS. The second the customer calls and says, Hey, I have a problem. Boom. He's like the Amazon of this gel. And that, that stuff isn't yeah. cheap. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Not Absolutely. And my mother-in-law is one of those funny people, man. Like, and she is so much an advocate for transformation factory that if anybody wants CMOS, she actually promotes him more than she promotes me. <laughs> yep. And and that, that was a smart you know, thing. She would, she would say, you know, my son in law, he would be good, yeah, but she's like, you want the gel. <laughs> you want each other gel. Yeah. You can't go wrong with the gel. Yeah. And I think that's the beautiful thing. And from that, she has now started to expand her knowledge on naturopathic mm -hmm. foods. And that's all that we're talking about is uh, naturopathic foods. We're talking about uh, nutraceutical science. Um, you know, like oh, learning about CMOS is great. Like it opens up a door. And, you know, and from our private conversations, like, good God, imagine when they learn about some of the other things that um, is available. Like moringa. But, like, if your kid, let's, let's, uh, let's jump, let's, you know, we used to drop some jacks there to be. Mm -hmm. but, um, but you remember you sent me some um, raw cacao. Yeah. And cacao affects your serotonin and your dopamine levels. Mm -hmm. And so if you take just a couple of grams of that raw cacao that's available on St. Lucian CMOS um, our website, that stuff can be like your little espresso shot in the morning. Mm -hmm. That little mind little pickup. You, could put, you remember that time you, you were trying it and you grated some and had it with, I think you even had it with damn salsa leaves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so they make a cocoa. Sorry to interrupt you, but I just want to say they make a cocoa tea down here, and that's what they add. They add bay leaves and soursop leaves to it, and they right. boil it with some star anise and stuff like that. And that's how they make their, yeah, the cocoa tea. And they grate the, the thing, and then they put either like condensed milk, or, or like if you're vegan or whatever, you put coconut cream. Right. Right. And you can make a really dope morning espresso. You'll find that your levels are elevated. Um, because, you know, like the cacao, the raw cacao is good for your dopamine and your serotonin levels because there are people that suffer seasonal depression. Um, I think in the UK we call it, we used to call it sad disease. It's a recognized thing. And this cacao <laughs> is good for that. I never knew that. Yeah. And so you can make yourself some chocolate tea. 
and have that in the morning, like you said, with the sardines, with the cinnamon, all of these really powerful botanicals. And that's a whole nother conversation, you know what I mean? Mm. And it's still so much products that people could actually put together that's from that seamless. It doesn't have to, like, look at the people that are now doing the uh, the Seamoss lemonade, I think I saw recently. Huge. Um, I saw somebody on um, the Facebook group. They were doing um, the f- fruit juices with Seamoss. Yeah. So the, I, I just want to give a highlight to that because I'm really happy with this guy. This is a guy, Kobe. Kobe, I don't know his last name. But if you go in the Seamoss buyer group and find it, like, he started in this business, you know what I mean? He came a little off in the beginning, right? But I'll say this. He came back and he showed, like, like I don't want to say respect, but manners. I'm a big guy on manners. Do you know what I mean? And I never felt he did anything wrong. But the fact that he came to me and kind of said, you know, I'm sorry or whatever, he, you know, you felt he did wrong. I was like, bro, you didn't do anything wrong. But showed me a lot of respect to who he is, right? But, like, he's helped a lot of people. Do you know what I mean? Like one lady the other day um, posted that she made uh, $1,400 in sales in one day selling his lemonades. Can you believe that? And people were crying about the fact that he was selling them for 50 bucks. Can you believe that? Like I was so, and, and dude, the guy called me personally to kind of like express, and I like he was not happy. He was hurt. So imagine you're trying to sell a business. You're trying to get into this community, meet for new friends, you know, sort of like, you know, show who you are. You're a good person. And all you do is you get shitted on. Oh, why are you doing this this way? And oh, you you shouldn't be charging for that and blah, blah. Like, just shut your mouth. If you don't like it, keep it to yourself. Go tell your friends. Do you know what I mean? Don't come here or, or tell them in private or something like that. Don't don't try and, and, and shit on people's businesses because you don't agree with it. There's a lot of businesses I don't agree with. You don't see me coming in and 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 telling people how we feel. Sorry, rant done. No, 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 no. Because you remember that time somebody came up with that dehydrated powder uh, or like concentrated seamless powder, but they put uh, concentrated lemon or lime and ginger, so it's like a powder uh, drink. And I was like, that's freaking brilliant. And then you heard mm-hmm. somebody going on about, oh, the acid with this and that and the other. And I, and, and, and this is the thing. <laughs> it's like, uh, again, there's a lot of people in this, in this health space that make a lot of claims. And even when you are presenting them with the truth or some valid information that can be verified, not just by you, but other sources, they still choose to kind of back up that argument. How many times have we had conversations with people that claim that this is better than that? You know, mm-hmm. like, uh, because mine grows on the rocks. It, it's like they don't know or understand copywriting, digital marketing. So uh, it's almost like the style that they've learned in marketing their product is by bashing another person's product. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, that's not a sustainable business model. You know, no. the product sells itself, in all honesty. And um, because there's a lot of not just hype, but valid information that's been kind of proven. And the more people spend fighting somebody else, they miss opportunities to kind of come in with their own lane mm-hmm. and refine their market. Like, if I was today, to uh, like you remember, I experimented, I think, year before last with uh, I called it T Moss, right? Mm. T Moss for C Moss, T T E A Moss, mm. and I did the cucumber, and uh, it was like a cucumber punch, I believe, mm-hmm. it was the flavor. Yeah, the, the watermelon, the ginger, and it had the uh, the Irish moss gel in it. I'm gonna say this to people. That one product, I gave it to the mover that that moved us. It was, it was hot here in Georgia, uh, and I gave him a bottle. He was like, yo, this is amazing. Like, man, I was like, here, you 
go just put in the truck and um, you know and you have that um, and then I remember I did sell it for probably like about um, I would say it was about six weeks I think I sold that yeah a few weeks yeah it wasn't a long time less than two months um, like trying to get labels that wouldn't smear when it's wet and refrigerated you know mm, yeah all that too. <laughs> and stuff like that and we were in the midst of the pandemic so the supply chain for a lot of stuff was very limited at the time mm -hmm. and uh, but in one day i remember i think i sold like about 450 dollars worth of juice one day wow that's crazy that's crazy and and I think at the time, all I did was take, make, take a picture and I put it on Instagram and I took a picture and put it on Facebook and mm -hmm. I stopped bang, bang. Mm -hmm. They're all like, what's this? What's that? But, you know, as you're talking, I, I, I came up with an idea and I was like, why don't you do what Kobe's doing and start selling the recipes? Because you have lots of recipes. You have lots of products that are great. Do, do like who's doing? Kobe. Okay. Or no, you know what? It's not Kobe. I lied. It's G. Allen. I get them confused because they're both very similar. So there's a guy, G. Allen. He's selling Seamoss uh, lemonades and teas. And he started selling them at 50 bucks for the recipes. Now he's selling them for 100 bucks. And he's created a group where, you know, the group kind of meets and, and talks and communicates and stuff like that. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, again, for me, um, I'm not a person that's likely to sell my recipes. You know? Why? But I tell you what, though, um, I think if you have an idea and a product and a method, and because I think I saw some people complaining or saying, why would I do this or whatever, don't be mad at that person that in turn then has a viable business because they invested in themselves and the, the craft, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, it, like, for me, um, in the beginning, I remember I paid a, uh, a graphic illustrator. I can draw. I can draw very well. But again, don't be mad at me that I have assets, digital assets that look like they were created by a professional. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the same thing with these individuals that support. And hey, I want to grow my CMOS business. I just don't want to sell gel. I have the capacity to do other things with it, um, and they pay for it. I, I think that's brilliant. You know what I mean? It's nothing wrong with it. And this is and this is going right back to what we were talking about. Find your own lane, you know? Um, and the thing that I can confirm, and I will say this, and this is one of the reasons that I wanted to jump on, um, despite everything that people may say about you, this was a business that was granted by the Most High. Facts. Total facts. Okay. I wanted to really put that message out there. Be seeing you again sitting in uh, St. Lucia. It just reminded me. And us having morning chats at sunrise, looking at the beauty and the splendor and the, the, the garden that, that the Most High has created. And talking about the benefits of a product that we're very familiar with ever since we were young kids. Mm -hmm. And then finding an opportunity to make that product more available worldwide. And the way that everything transpired was by design. And so, you know, and as for that, we give thanks. More people are talking about CMOS than ever before. Never. People have access to it and premium quality. They have a, um, how can I say it? They got the plug, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. to get access to it. Um, they don't have to worry about some of the stuff that other people may have experienced before. How do I get it? Uh, is it this? Is this that? If they have a consistent product available. And, there are, and you and I both know there is a lot 
lot of aches and pain in trying to provide a consistent supply of of a product. Yeah, any product. At a particular quality, mm -hmm. you know, especially the quality that you, you desire to, to have available. Um, the logistics of it can be a lot, you know, and um, so to go up be the glory, and it's a beautiful day, and mm -hmm. here it is. On the other side of the pandemic, we've seen, you know, just how it grew and, um, and how it's not even slowed down. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to share something with you, and I think, and you know, I'm always ready to drop the one here, <laughs> you know, if you have our voyage chats. Yeah. For those who think that this is just a fair, um, at the end of 2021, the search for CMOS and CMOS gels were increased up by 350%. Wow. wow. That's crazy. This is according to Pinterest. Go and check it out. Google it. Um, mm. Believe me, Google it. Um, between 2021 and 2022, uh, I think the search results for CMOS and CMOS gel in 2022 was something around 3.7 million mm -hmm. versus 2021, it was 2.1 million people were searching for CMOS. Wow, almost doubled. So it's almost double, and um, it's still a viable uh, marketplace for you. Huge, you know what I mean? huge market. And it's huge, and it's only going to grow as more of mm -hmm. us embark on it, and God gives us the green light, and we move in this direction. I can't wait to see some of the innovation um that people are going to continue to come up with and I, i'm just grateful to be in this spot to witness it and to be like a old or godfather or you know like and and also facilitate uh a connection for people mm -hmm. you know it's a beautiful thing because look at where it started and to where it is now like that's why I jump in continuously on the Seymour's Virus Club on Facebook. If you haven't been on there, check it out. Mm. Um, I'm one of those people. I, I thank you for allowing me to be a gatekeeper out there. Yeah. You know, um, I trust you. Come in and clarity. I like to applaud people for that innovation. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Look what God has provided. Dude, it's and amazing. and. And, and and truly, like, the more I think about it, I'm going to get emotional right now. So I hope I'm just preparing you guys. But it has 100% always been God's plan. Right from the moment that you told me, you remember talking about this CMOS years ago when you were in UK. Do you know what I mean? And you, not to say that, like, uh, like I, we always knew about CMOS, but you kind of turned me back into it and you started talking about the, you know, that was the catalyst. That's what set everything off. Do you know what I mean? And 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 I think that one of the things I'll tell you a crazy story about that 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 I don't share with a lot of people, but I have a friend. She's passed on now. This girl was like an older lady. She was like one of my best friends from church. You remember her, right, Jennifer? This girl was seventy years old, and I'll never forget the spirit. You know, Holy Spirit speaking to me, and He said specifically, He goes, "You take care of her." And I will take care of you. And when I trace back a lot of the things that have happened in my life where everything is good now, a lot of it stemmed from her. From being like, she was the one that introduced me to the gel girl. Remember when I, you, you said you got to get on the sea moss and try the gel? I seeked her out. She did. She's the one that introduced me to all the people with the bees. I prayed to God, right? Because I wanted to get in before CMOS, I, I, like I'm a beekeeper now, but I really wanted to start a business with, with honey. And I prayed to God. I said, like, I am having such a hard time getting into this space. All these bee places are are so far away from me. I have to try out travel like 45 minutes. I'm like, with my schedule, I could never do that. Can you believe that she introduced me to a lady who had bees next door to the building that I was living into? How is like God? 
Only God can do that kind of shit. Do you know what I mean? And even like how, you know, you introduced me to it. Then I met this girl. Then I go down there. Then I meet Ashen. Then this happens and that happens and all these other crazy. You've seen some of the stories where I told you all oh, this thing. I, like, you know what I mean? Like how do I mean? And, and what I'm beginning to see now is that I feel like God has a big plan for us. And he's assembling like a team of us. Do you know what I mean? Like I can really see a team, like a power team of, of powerful black men forming. And us working with each other to be alpha males. And, and and what's crazy is that many people that I see forming in this group, they've all secretly come to me and said that this, this was a desire in their heart. That, that they could have like sort of like, like you know, uh, uh, like, um, what do they call it? What's a DC comic? Like a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, yeah. And we all help each other, and 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 even and you even know we compete. Like you know, I watched this thing on um, Snoop Dogg early this morning, where he was talking about how you know him and Jay Z and Nas, and they all competed with each other. You know, Nas puts a bang around, and he's all like, "Oh, who's that producer? I right, get him on the phone. I'm doing this next." You know what I mean? And and me growing up when I was doing DJing, that's what it was like. Or even skateboarding. You know, I used to skateboard, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, all that stuff. Yeah, the big boy King. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Miss Abby, how you doing? How you doing, my dear? Good morning. But yeah, yeah, so I see big things happening for all of us. I really do. I think we just got to get ready. Some of us are more ready than others. Some of us need to kind of like you know. I know there's a lot I need to do. I think that there's certain things that I am. I need to fix in my life or change. And when I change those or implement them, then like the doors will open. It's almost like he hasn't given stuff to me that is waiting for me because I'm not ready for it. So I'll be blowing kisses at you. Yeah, I'm like, who is this? It's not your wife. What's up with that? <laughs> I'm just messing around. <laughs> Even like the people that begin to assemble, and I think that's the thing. That's the message that we're gonna continue to stick with. It. I don't care what anybody else has to say about me, you, what we've done. I've seen people say that oh, we sell fake moss. I see people saying that because ours is far, this, this, and that, and the other, or. <laughs> they try to like we've never ever hid from anybody the source of where it comes from that's number one be honest about uh where your product comes from people are now starting to see that the way in which the uh sea moss is harvested is sustainable mm -hmm. not damaging both the ecology of saint lucia by having this infrastructure in place the other thing i've got um do you know that seaweeds and sea mosses and algaes and stuff like that, they attribute 70% of the world's um, oxygen producing production. Mm -hmm. The rainfall produces like, I think it's one about 20 or 25%. The other 5% comes from other sources. Mm -hmm. So even us having like a, a hub and infrastructure in place um it's like it's just it even to offset yep it's it's a very positive business model we we need to put and more sea moss in the ocean not less absolutely absolutely so you know when we talk about what's real like other people can, can say a lot of stuff and they can make a lot of claims that it has uh 200 and something mineral the phoenix i'm not taking shots at anybody i could be messy but i don't want to be like that yeah. All right. but you know we, we're not 
focus on those things. We are truth seekers. We are truth hunters, you know, and that's been the beautiful thing about this journey, you know, is finding out and uncovering. And as we uncover new information, it's like, yeah, look at this, everybody, and sharing that information, especially on the platform, um, the Seymour Spires Club. So I, I, I've been I'm really grateful to see um, you returning. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I'm now trying to figure out how to get down. You, know? you, you got to try and get down. Even if you can come down in like the next two weeks or something like that, like a lot of us are, are going to try and meet down here. And um, we're going to do some filming and shit like that should be cool. But it's funny when you were talking to this stuff, something that came to mind, I, and I just want to put it out there. I feel sorry for the next person that comes to me and tries to tell me that I'm in this for the money. Because I'm going to freaking let them have it. I'm, I'm yeah. just, yeah, I'm going to destroy them. Like, <laughs> Flip out. I, I like, like things that take place behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to encourage you on here is I know you're a very private person and you don't often shape um, publicly what you do privately. Mm -hmm. But I encourage you to do a lot of recording um, if permissible. And go into like the the community, the fishing community, mm -hmm. and and it. I know what the bar. I know I've seen the videos. I've seen uh, you also helping harvesters that don't even do business directly with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've I've watched that, and and oh is just continue to do stuff like that because at the end of the day you know the truth will stand you know what i mean like that's, that's true. the beautiful thing about the journey it's a righteous god of the end pure um then and allow you to be a part of it and 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 be be proud of the fact that you've been an ambassador for um saint lucia mm -hmm. be proud of that you know, mm -hmm. you've been for that community, you mm -hmm. know, your soil. Um, and be unapologetic about the message that you have, you know, because mm -hmm. it's not for profit only, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that the beautiful thing and people are gonna always have something to say and um, and uh, and they always will holler at the moon. Dogs bark at the moon and holler at the moon. You know what I mean? Yeah. The light show so that man may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And mm. that's all we can do. Let your light shine. And when your light shines bright, it's going to draw the attention of people that get the message. And it also gets the attention of people that are going to try to deconstruct or to criticize you and stuff like that. Let your light thus shine so that man may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. I yeah. know how much it's changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I should. But at the end of the day, it's a lot of times, it's like, first of all, a lot of times these things that we do happens quickly. Like there's a need, we satisfy it. That's it. And we're not doing it so that we can go back and say to people, oh, look what we did. So in some ways, I'm reluctant to kind of do it, like because one, I don't want to put these people's businesses out there. You know what I mean? It's not like they gave me permission to tell their story. And then two, you know, I'm not doing it so I can tell a story. You know what I mean? I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do, and that I believe that God has put us on this mission to do those things. Do you know what I mean? Like in some ways, the business is the gift, but the work is helping the people to get that gift. Do you know what I'm saying? And so if I, I know that if I don't do these things, when they become, when they sort of come, they're presented to me or try, then either I'm not going to learn a lesson that I'm supposed to learn, or I'm not going to get a blessing that is, that I'm supposed to get. A lot of these things are tests, tests to see wh where my true heart is, who I truly am as a man. Do you know what I mean? Am I going to do this or am I going to think of for myself? You know what I mean? And so those are the kind of things that I try to think about when I'm deciding whether or not I should help someone or not. Because some people come to help and they don't deserve it. 
You know what I mean? And at first you think they do, and then you realize you're like, fuck, this guy is just a snake. You know what I mean? And, and this is the other thing as well, like that I've learned in this space is that, you know, you know that you've helped a lot of people. You know, I've tried to help a lot of people and give away a lot of information, a lot of insight. Um, because we're familiar with these natural big products, we're oh. familiar with nutraceutical science, you know, you've shared stories about Yen and, and your experience growing up and I've shared experience of my my dad and growing up in, mm. in uh school in, in Jamaica and you know and both come very rural humble backgrounds and we've been familiar with this stuff all our lives and um, and so imagine for somebody to to uh take your information and they allow that spirit of capitalism to rule them um, and we've seen where we've fostered relationships with people to help them to grow, and there is no loyalty in it, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we're okay that people have, because our destiny is not desi- it's not based on them. Our destiny is on what we do with what God is. Mm-hmm. And so, irregardless of whether my phone keeps like uh, it's on the table, so that's why <laughs> it just keeps like doing this, right? Yeah, you wonder what's going. On. I I had to bite. I I invested in a a whole like uh, here. I'll take it off and show you. <laughs> I got one in. I got the whole selfie stick with the rig, <laughs> you know. And I got a new laptop, so. Yeah. <laughs> all, all, all thanks to CMOS, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, CMOS so, is a people. This is this, this is really great, you know. Celebrate this, this is roughly what two and a half years mm-hmm. ago, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two. Well, actually, it's going on two years now. So we started the business in May 2020. Oh, yes. Yes. They've been just uh, about two years. And talking about the CMOS and the, you know, because that started before the business physically launched. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, look at what God has done. Open up a whole industry, you know. Um, You remember how hard it was to even get into the... um, circle with those individuals that were part of the <laughs> growers. What? You remember the original growers and harvesters in, in St. Lucia? Oh, okay. So, you know what I was laughing? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you up. I was laughing because um, I thought you were going to go into about the CMOS Buyers Club. and Because there was clubs before, groups on Facebook where they you had to be no, they wouldn't let anybody sell and that stuff. You couldn't, you couldn't contact anybody. You couldn't have a conversation remotely with anybody. Mm-hmm. I, you know, like, like people understand we've been at this for a minute trying to. Uh, I don't think we have to go inside the box. Oh, this is Georgia, man. They're not so big. But, um, <laughs> You know, trying to reach out to, and there's no disrespect to them because I know that they don't necessarily have the capacity, but the personal aid brothers and sisters that run that whole enterprise, it took, I think it was six months before I got a response from somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, and now look at it by your, by your light shining, you got a lot of growers and harvesters that have now created the own digital platforms. So that was part of the point. Do you know what I mean? Like, so when a lot of the, sorry? Like, look at it. Oh, no, you got them actively, you know, in your inbox and saying, hey, I've got this, I've got this deal, I've got this deal. You remember, you know, remember, you remember I the direct to consumer model. Mm-hmm. Rem- no shade thrown at any of them because in our hearts, what 
tired of people taking what comes from the Caribbean and then acting like it's theirs. How many people have you had to uh, kind of like check about beating down the farmers on the prices? Mm-hmm. You know? And, and like, no, that's not a sustainable way. And because of that, you know, we'll see it like, and, and people don't even realize how much you advocated for them, even though they may look at you as direct competition. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you said it before, I'm a disruptor. And one of the things that I, I know that I did was I disrupted the industry where before um, it was very, and it wasn't difficult. It's just a lot of the people on the island did not know how to independently sell. And so we showed the way on how, like, a lot of people saw what we were doing and they were like, wow, okay, let's copy that. And I'm, I'm so excited and happy. Like, to me, it's a blessing. You know what I mean? It's, that, yeah. That, event, it's not just for, because, like, the thing about uh, nutraceuticals and, and natural empathic science, CMOS is one part of it. You know, it's beautiful, but the amount of, like, when you showed me the list of products and herbs and roots and Mm -hmm. it's endless. You got to do this if you scream. (laughs) The scrolling. (laughs) And so imagine how that's going to benefit a whole other bunch of people that's going to be able to share the insight and the expertise. And imagine if this model, like, and then the funny part about it, the model that was shown and by how about I say it? Let your light shine. shine. That man may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. They will either see it and then, oh my goodness, I could have been doing this. Look at Vincentians. Shout out to the Vincent people. Like out there pushing the product now, direct to consumer. Mm-hmm. People that, because like, the EC, Vince, St. Vincent, um, St. Lucia falls into, but like Antigua, Grenada, you know, um, mm-hmm. Guyana, all these are oh, hopeless because of the collapse in tourism, the collapse in the, the, the tourism dollar in the middle of the pandemic. And they return back to like one of the guys that jumped in the Seymour Spires Club was from Backway. Mm-hmm. Backway is downtown. Um, Kingston in, in St. Vincent. Uh-huh. Back way. It's not bush, but it's like, it's out there, right? Country. And for this guy to literally put together a little thing and present his product, like, direct to consumer, you're giving that individual hope. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it, calamity, you uh-huh. know? And that's why what You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like mm-hmm. inspiration doesn't come from man, it comes from God. Mm-hmm. If, it, if, if it doesn't come from man, it, it's designed by God and man just have to open the eyes and walk into it. Uh, and the fact that we trust the most high and do business. And remember what we said at the beginning. You and I had this conversation, it's like we don't want to do business, we want to do what? God business. Yeah, God's work. Godly. And there are some losses in that. However, look at the outcome. Mm-hmm. You know, look at the relationships that have been formed. Like, mm-hmm. and I know you always share exactly what's going on. There has been some big deals that have been on the table and some big deals that have just flew right off the table too. Uh You know what I mean? But at the same time, staying consistent. Uh uh, Salute, man. Salute to the program, uh, the work that's been done. I've enjoyed being a part of it. I'm glad I got a chance to to see it at this disruptive model for empowering our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean, um, showing them how to have direct to consumer relationships. Uh, I've been grateful to see how being a disruptor, you have a platform for our brothers and sisters. And now you're seeing people not only selling CMOS, but 
I think we'll see most buyers club somebody saying, hey, I got roots, herbs, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you, you can bypass GNC. You can bypass some of the big major brands. Mm -hmm. They come direct to most buyers club and get a contact. And if they're full of foolishness, guess what? We're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. They'll get checked. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. so, and if you have a great experience with them, jump on Seymour's Buyers Club and talk about it. Mm -hmm. And this person had done all direct to consumer relationship. Guess what? It allows them to now have a larger presence. Don't worry about, oh, I'll keep the club to myself. And we don't do all that kind of foolishness over here. But if anything, we're going to introduce you to, like, like, because. You know, like let's let's take for example, um, Transformation Factory, right? Mm -hmm. um, you would share some stuff, some nuggets, right? And he created his own little platform. Do you know? Like, I learned copywriting, uh, digital marketing mm -hmm. through Google Media Space mm -hmm. and, and being in relation with you. Mm -hmm. Like, I have that skill. I'm a, I'm a 50 something year old scientist, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I have some new skills in this digital marketplace um, that not only can help me in this lane, but can also help me in other lanes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know, where I'm coming from, like, you will find your niche. Mm -hmm. I'm drop their CMOS ice cream that is widely accepted and looked for by other people does it make sense mm -hmm. you know all the people drunk and see more gummies we see in the see more tea what about the people that are using like a stabilizer in um like mm -hmm. just that, uh, the, there's a see uh, fat burner cream right 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 all these are coming out of that group right. I took the Seymour's water and I'm going to drop another gem on her. I used um, red berry seed oil because it's a natural sun protectant. And I added it to Seymour's water along with uh, argan oil. And from that, uh, it was a uh, hair spritz using the Seymour's water after you soaked the moss. Wow. Condition your hair mm -hmm. almost like a shampoo conditioning agent. Oh, like the you know, like women that are having those like little alopecias from um, from the tight braids and stuff like. But that. even here, like, this is alopecia right yeah. there. And then also like the natural environmental toxins that are floating around. Bro, you, you use that on your skin and in your hair and all of that kind of stuff. That my wife's auntie is always bugging me. Can you make me some more? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I imagine in a stable, a shelf stable product. And people don't really have conversations that I'm privy to that we had the other day. What were we talking about? How do you make a product shelf stable naturally? Mm -hmm. Remember we had yeah, about a few times. Biggest making shelf stable products naturally mm -hmm. and guess what as we find out and grow more in this space and we could let your light shine man may see your good works glorify your father in heaven there are people that are now drawn into this space that has that expertise that can say well jules this is what i've been doing mm -hmm. you know space that i see already happening um Look at the network, like the core network that we've got right now. It's it is crazy. It's crazy. gonna get crazy. It's been before, my goodness, uh, in celebrating two years of operation, wait till you see what the next two years is gonna look like. It's gonna be epic. Mm -hmm. and all brothers that have banded together. Um, and it's a beautiful thing, you know. It is, and 
one of my goals for the future is to build this mastermind team that I see forming and to use it like for all of us to better ourselves, to all of us to like ride on each other, to really push each other. And then like, you know, five, 10 years from now, we'll be able to go on these like, you know, like book a jet and do some million dollar things because it's just starting with CMOS, bro. Like you touched on it earlier. There's so many other herds. There's so many other potential for other products and stuff like that. And, you know, as the space grows, what? Mm-hmm. It's like the conversations we had about visiting the EC. And yes, we're advocates for St. Lucia, but, you know, there are other Eastern Caribbean countries. Like tourism, and traditionally, was by the big hotel chains. Mm-hmm. The hospitality is the world's largest industry, mm-hmm. right? Or second, I'm not sure. It's either first or second, according to statistics. So imagine... You're not going to like a uh, branded hotel, but you're coming out to the rural areas and us connected with, you know, these mm-hmm. rural is happening in Jamaica right now. Mm-hmm. And us and turning around and saying, hey, this is a place they understand customer service, they understand data protection, they understand, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, straight and it's not no tearing or ripping off thing and stuff like that. And imagine people coming to St. Lucia, not just for the Seahawks, but for the experience of, you know, um, having a mineral bath soak, you know, mm-hmm. um, having, imagine some of the, the, the young girls from those rural communities that turn around and, and learn about um, a certain type of healing massages and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, offering services to people and you know like people have no idea just the scale of what we've been looking at um mm-hmm. and what freaking great CMOS you know what I mean uh boss boss bosses you know CMOS drink the input drink you know what I mean mm-hmm. he's got his moss love portion yeah his love potion you know or you can imagine in addition to that, you come in and unplug it and having a realization that, you know what, I'm doing too much over here. I need to focus or even come in and use it, that location as a hub for your ideas mm-hmm. and create, you know, where you just, let's get on a plane, let's go to St. Lucia. I know that guy that's on the TV with the bald head. You know, he's here saying St. Lucia, this, that, the other, and the other space. Remember we talked about the geodesic the, um, dubs? That could be a nice space for um, creativity. Mm-hmm. Uh, creat- I'm and looking into that. that. Dude, I'm, I'm one, of, one of the things that I plan to do when I'm here, I'm meeting with a buddy, of, well, a guy that I met, who I honestly truly believe God, like, fucking brought him to my face, brought him into my life. Because imagine this, this guy is like, like he's in his like 70s or 60s. He's an older guy, man. You know what I mean? And he's of a certain culture. I don't want to describe too much, but there's certain cultures, there's certain groups that don't mix with other groups. And so he's in a culture in a group that really does not mix with locals, right? They stay away from them. That's just the way they are. And I don't think he's like that. But the point is, this guy just kind of showed up in my front door. Like I walked out and he was there in the truck and, and he came and talked to me and he was looking for um, this guy. His name was like Nonas, some important guy. And he proceeds to tell me about how Nonas was there, always there for him. Nonas always helped him. You know, he needed this for that. Nonas gave it to him, blah, blah, blah. And um, turns out this Nonas guy was like my relative. He was like married to my one of my dad's cousins or something who lived next door. That's why he came to the house. Then he starts talking to me, finds out I'm a real estate agent. And he's like, well, I got all land to sell. I got land all over here. I got land. Like all over Molashik, he's got land he wants to sell. Up in the north, Kappa State, this, he's got tracks and tracks of land. He's like, I have so much land, I don't know what to do with it. I just want to get rid of it. I'm sick of holding on to it. So imagine this guy comes out of nowhere. And he's calling me like we're boys, like we're buddies. Like he knows my first name. Like when I call him from Toronto, he's like, hey, Julian, what's up? And when my partner was like, you met that guy? 
and 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 like and I would play him some of the conversations that we and he's like what he's like oh my gosh he's like bro he's like see those those kind of guys they don't talk to us kind of guys that's what he pretty much said so he said if he's talking to you that like don't fuck that up <laughs> and that's the most high moves because you gotta remember there have been times where you've done stuff and there's been no quote unquote um, expectations of a return right. and the flip side of it is it it's your character that's being exhibited you mm -hmm. know and um, so people can say whatever they want you know we know what we are mm -hmm. as men and we know um, what we're responsible for and um, and we trust like I said the most high and so people can't be surprised when we have these levels of interaction mm -hmm. but you were telling me the story of quote unquote um, Alexio right mm -hmm. and brought that to my attention and almost literally the moment you mentioned it out of your mouth next thing I know you and him become free mm -hmm. crazy like but even just, him he, you know like yeah, I was gonna say even with him. How? Sorry, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Like just that. But that's the you thing. Know, he, you, you know how I met him, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I gave out. Free, I was giving out free coaching calls, and he called to, to get like or free calls on on scaling, and he called me to get us. And that to me says a lot. I was thinking about it the other day, like you know, in my life, when it comes to finding people's characters, a lot of times. It takes one or two things that you do that I see that just sets you apart from everybody else. And for him, it was him calling me and asking me for advice when he didn't really need my advice at all. Do you know what I'm saying? He was doing way better than ever. You know what I mean? He knows he was doing amazing. And so to call me and say all that stuff is like, wow. Like, you know what I mean? And, and I'll add this. Nobody could ever talk shit about that guy in front of my face. I will punch, the, I mean, I'm, I'm letting the, the internet know, I will punch you in the face, literally. If I'm in the room and you start talking shit about that guy, I will set you straight because I've had conversations with him where I've got to know the, the, a lot of people don't know who that guy is. And if you knew who the guy was, you would have a lot more respect for him and um, you wouldn't say shit about him. You just let him do his thing. You know what I mean? Because he, he's a really good person. He has a great heart. He's done a lot for a lot of people. And um, he deserves everything he's getting. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah, no one talks shit about that. I, last night, someone sent me this thing about the, this guy comparing his CMOS. I was ready to just go on that guy's thing. You know what I mean? And if it was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I just try to control my emotion there. But it's because we're new friends that I don't want to just jump in and be like, because ah, 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 he'd be like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? But at the time, I wanted to shit on that guy and be like, bro, your fucking CMOS is garbage compared to this guy. Like, how dare you? Com yeah, yeah, sure. You want 32 ounces of crap versus eight, eight ounces of perfection. How do you compare that? Like, sorry. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if the guy's CMOS is crap. <laughs> Yes. You know, like, bro, like, just a whole different level. Mm. Whole, and, and this is the thing, like, people be surprised how, you know, people you would think were in competition with. No, we're not in competition. We're all about the same common good. Yeah. So we don't look competition, you know? Mm -mm. We, as, what can I do for you? Should this happen? What can you do for me? Should this happen? That's called brothers. Let go egos and let's get on to doing good business. Good you see? goosebumps, bro. Yeah. If I have to tell you one, one of my biggest regrets in this business was not taking your advice to reach out to Ricky sooner. You remember you said it in the beginning, and I and I schlepped it off. I was like, ah, you know, and I mean, part of it too is I, I I was still new in the space. I didn't know a lot of people. I didn't know what was going on or who to trust and who not to trust. And quite frankly, I didn't trust anybody. So for like when you made the suggestion to trust someone, I was just like, I 
<laughs> no, I'm just going to mind my business, stay in my lane. And when I see the bitter, bigger picture, then I know I can step out. But definitely the friendship that we've developed with Ricky is, is, is priceless. Yeah. He's a really good guy. He's always had my back. Anytime I need it, he's like, don't worry, bro. I got you. You know what I mean? We'll sit on the phones and talk shit for hours and just laugh and joke about this or that situation. <laughs> you know? I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was bummed. That's why I was showing you. You know, it's like, um, that's how we know we're doing good business. You don't see the thrill of destruction. You see fruitfulness, you mm -hmm. know, as in these last two years, you know what I mean? And because there's fruitfulness, we know that we're on the right path, mm -hmm. you know? Or it's like, we engage with other brothers that we, we don't know. We never knew Ricky like that. No. We didn't know like that, no. you know, um, and just all of the warming, and, um, and so, you know, it's a celebration day, you're back home, <laughs> and, uh, and I just couldn't help but jump on, um, and just to celebrate this day with you, man. Thank you. Um, the balcony is certainly upgraded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm only here for two weeks. Then you're gonna get the the old balcony back. You know what I mean? <laughs> as soon as the family goes, it's right back to poverty. <laughs> this is only for a season. Huh? Do I what? Sorry, you were breaking up. Five from when two years ago. Are they still available? Big five? No, big fives. So, you know, every time you say the exact word, it cuts out. Okay, so you remember the previous lives? Yes. Do you still have them? Yeah, so I have the lives from, I archived all the lives. <laughs> yes. No, I have and to. And it's funny, it's funny you say that because that was what Alexia was saying to me the other day. Is like, bro, you you need to get and show the world who you are. And, and what you're doing and, and you have so much good information and stuff like that. You know, even if you could take these lives and put them down into smaller digestible trunk chunks, because they are long. Who who sits there and watches? Look, we've been talking for two two hours and fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, like some, there's some nuggets, there's some deep nugget in the previous lives that um, where we've had the beauty of having conversations, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, shout out to uh, you know all the people that participated in previous lives. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of vendors, a lot of jail makers, and stuff like that, and. You know, we've seen some of them go on to do some incredible stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you remember that one particular player person here in Atlanta? Yeah, you may not do business with me anymore because you want somewhere else. But, you know, it's cool. I watch you grow, you know. Mm -hmm. I watch this grow. Hey, naturally, me. I, well, I, 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 proof of it. How you doing? Bless up. Um, so, you know, it was really great to see them venture off. And I think right now they import a lot of salsa, like fresh salsa fruit. Oh, really? And it's available and offering salsa juice, I believe, you know? You and should so, put them in touch with Ricky. Ricky's always looking for a link on salsa. We're always talking about that. Okay. Okay. Like, I'll, 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 Like 
individuals will tell you, I am not this social media guy. I yeah. am the ghost. I am the background phantom person. Do you know how hard it took me to get him to come and do this? Like, to show his face on Instagram? <laughs> Like days, I'm like, come on, man, let's do. It. That's how I got you was on the live streams. I I, I pressured you into doing it. <laughs> Peer pressure. Uh, so, but this has been good for me. It's helping me to come out of my reclusive sort of nature, and I'm not there yet. You know, mm -hmm. I'm still, uh, but I've grown. You know, it's good to take in. Some elements that are teaching me how to do things such as like I didn't know how to do copywriting and digital marketing. I'm a scientist, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's my lane. I love my lane, you know. Um, so mm -hmm. it's really that you know we can see the evolution of us as men, you know, in this uh, in this this digital space, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I would say this much. Um, stay tuned. If you haven't already joined the Seymour Spires Club, stay tuned. Like, I can't say this is going to happen next week. Well, guess what? You all tune in next month. But I can a lot taking place in the background. Oh, so big things. Like, and, and I just think the platform um, where you all can come and learn, ask questions without fear of being demonized by. Um, the typical angry, like, like, can I touch on this for a second? Yep. Like, be plant based, spiritual, and so blood angry all the time. I don't get it, you know? <laughs> you got all this good, healthy hormone imbalance. <laughs> I don't, yes. I don't want to be the leader. He doesn't want to be the leader. I certainly don't want to be on social media. <laughs> and time, you know, who is going to be that person that will really, like, come into that space and really provide that, hey, this is such and such, we're going to chop it up, blah, 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 blah. You know, and mm. it's, it's just endless. And the amount of connections people are making because you have some direct-to-consumer relationships with some of the harvesters on that same platform. Mm -hmm. The bias are so um, throttling, like the posts get throttled or deleted and all of that kind of stuff. If you're a person, bro, you're a Bro, you're a the, the, the amount of people that have banned me on that group, and it's my group, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they get mad at whatever I'm saying because they don't like, and they're just like blocking me, and I'm, I just laugh because it's just like, okay, whatever, bro. Like, you know what I mean? But yet you're you're still here using me. You know what I mean? Like you're using the platform, but you don't want to hear what I have to say. You know? Sorry, I just had to jump in there because I I find it funny that that like that's the one thing I won't do is like um, that's another reason why I, I'm worried about putting moderators on because then I can't control what they're moderating. And they, they, you know, they might not moderate in the way that I want to. And really, I just, everybody should have a, a voice to say, unless you're saying something completely fucking left field or way off, you know what I mean? They're coming to tell me to go to breakfast. I know. I can see, I can see them moving around. <laughs> they're going to be like, we want to go for breakfast. We're hungry. <laughs> Watch. See? Any minute. Hello? Hi. Hey. I heard you talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't specifically talking about you, but just predicting what was going to happen. So what are you coming out here to say to me? Nothing. Oh. I just wanted to see what you were saying about me. Oh, I was talking about breakfast. I was like, they're coming here to kick me off so they can go eat breakfast. You want to say hi to Kenya? Come, come, come in. You can say hi. Come say hi to Kenya. Hi, Kenya. How are you? Is. Not much. Just trying to enjoy this beautiful uh, resort. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Hey, you know what's so funny, man? Like, I won't say 
ain't gonna lie, but you know how sometimes we have some funny moments we can think back and laugh about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like, check this out. Remember uh, when, when yeah, Otis was like a baby and, uh, and we did the painting? The painting of the oh, house? Oh, the painting. When I went to Vancouver and you guys painted? After it was done. <laughs> and we did it like the night before, after we got back from a nightclub. <laughs> That's so true. Absolutely. <laughs> but spiritually and emotionally. So that's the beautiful thing. What we're about, you know? So mm-hmm. solution to the door. Love you. Love you like cooked food, you know? Uh-huh. Love you. <laughs> Let me see your pond. Show us your pond. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I think we seen it on that episode of uh, was it? House Hunter. Hunter. I showed her the House Hunters episode. <laughs> But how many people have actually seen you watch it? Like, uh, has anybody mentioned, said, oh, I seen you on House Hunters? Mentioned, I went into a high school. Because what some people don't know, I've been teaching physics and environmental science in the high school system when I come to public schools. Mm-hmm. And I walked into a school and imagine a student said to me, you look familiar. And I'm like, yeah. They said, you were on TV. I said, like, ah, oh, TV. Um, he just said that to me. Public officials, I know your face once they hear me speak. Mm. I had a woman stop me in a supermarket when she heard me talking and said, You were on TV. I said, ah, yeah. yeah. You think, because you do have that unique mm-hmm. accent, you know? You have a unique accent, so not many people have that that Bermudian that accent. accent. Yeah. So cool people have noticed, so they hear me talking, and they're like, "Wait a minute, I think that happened in Target." You know, so mm. um, it was quite an experience. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, God is the greatest. That's all I can say. God is know? good. He is. Yeah. He's the best. Look, look what a little man can do for you, huh? Yeah. Totally, yeah. totally, and I can't wait to go and like reconnect with the plant. Like, if I could go right now and go in the water and go hunt for sea moss, I would be doing that right now. <laughs> yeah, just living in the water. Did some work the other day. Um, I had a problem with the. Uh, that's the point. My catfish is is in here struggling. I know that much. I gotta go do some work with it. Yeah. I'm about to redo this little pond, but you'd be proud of me, man. I got, I've been doing some planting. I've planted some high, what do you call these things? High drainages? Never heard of But it looks good. The backyard looks good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's nice, nice cut grass. Uh, I see she's, she's got you working. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing some reseeding. I did some uh, concrete pavers for my. Rubbish bins, you know, keep them behind the gate. Um, so I've got a lot of plants, a lot of time. They're planting hostas and stuff like that. And I've got to buy some more mulch and mm-hmm. lay some stuff. Behind. So mm-hmm. yeah, just little by little, my friend, you know. You have a list of stuff you got to do, Kenya? 
you have a you have a list that you have to complete. <laughs> Your wife give you a list. <laughs> I burn that list. I'm like I can't read. <laughs> Suddenly I don't know how to read. It's like. Oh. <laughs> You should do it. Well, uh, when are you leaving? Right now? Uh, Sorry. We'll wait for me and we'll go. Sorry. I remember I listen. Remember I told you about the breakfast thing? She, she probably heard me talking about it, so she didn't say it on camera. But as soon as she left, that was the first thing she said. She's like, we're going for breakfast. And, you know, basically, basically say, we're leaving you. We're <laughs> um, just real shout out to Katie. Katie, I don't know if you're still on there. Um, give me a show, Miss Katie. It's yeah. good to catch up with you. Um, I don't know if she's still on there. But that's my girl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This, I call it your hands, and I never forget it. We, um, we went we were working together uh, in Newcastle. People actually thought it was Scarlett Johansson and thought I was her black boy guy. <laughs> <laughs> that could that could work though. You know what I mean? You look like you could be that bodyguard type. Right, and then some people thought I was Cedric the Entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, six feet tall. Okay, yeah. So to be entertaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah, I might do it tomorrow. For sure, I'll probably do it the Wednesday. I'll do it a morning. And you talk about, like, CMOS, um, <laughs> just your own business. What is it? What are some of the things that you can do with it? Connect with us. Um, you can catch um, St. Lucia's CMOS company on Instagram. You can go in with me. Um, on this page, I don't think I'm on Vegan Electric this time. I think I'm just on Zacharias Francis. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, check out the Facebook group page. Ask some questions about CMOS. What is it? How can it work? Um, and, it, and I see a few people here from the UK on here. Um, get connected, man, because like, there's a woman in London um, that was recently selling CMOS. I, I, didn't, I, know, I know Bari used to do it a lot. Mm -hmm. But Bari is a fashion designer. And so her focus gets pulled into her uh, clothing. Collection, uh, collection. So she won't consistently be in our space. Um, but this one lady in South Hall, which is near Heathrow Airport, that woman was moving some CMOS gel. Mm -hmm. And I believe recently she was in the hospital, so her whole unit has shut down. Wow. And that doesn't mean that we don't want, you know, like the things that we're focusing on is how you can optimize and automate your business that even when you're not physically there, your business can still flourish and provide you a sustainable mean. Like that's the kind of things when we talk with Julian so called scale. How do you scale it? Because up to now, a lot of us have been hustling as business people. Mm -hmm. If we're still going to be there every day, it's still hustling, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but when you have systems and procedures in place, and that's one thing I can give you like some real strong credit for, connect with my boy because he will teach you how to put systems in place. That's what this guy does. He understands how to put systems. In I place. try to understand. Don't make me sound like a super expert. <laughs> you, know, you know how to put a system in place. Yeah. 
I know how to build businesses. Yeah. Resources for yourself. Because let's give an example. One little simple thing you did saved, uh, let's say, uh, in one month, it saved, I'm going to say, around 600 bucks, right? Mm. And imagine repeating that every single month, right? At the end of the year, what does that equate to? Yeah, like over $7,000. You should be, you should be comfortable spending anywhere from five to ten thousand U.S. dollars a month. There you go. So there is one little simple system, one little simple jam that you are able to share with people on how to streamline here so that you have the resources to expand your business. Yeah. You know, and that's the beauty of breaking bread and and, you know, and there's no. No. That that being said, I am thinking about <coughs> starting a club, like a paid club, which uh, a large portion of the money will go to supporting farmers in St. Lucia and other countries. But it'll be a club where it's more like, you know, you'll have preferred pricing and you'll have like, you know, inside information and I'll go in and discuss things in more high detail than I would right. online. You know what I mean? Because if it's more of a closed group, like I'm willing to show people like what I spend on my ads, what my ads look like, what we wrote it on, da 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 da. Like I'm not, you know what I mean? But I, I don't want to do it to the world. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's the best value that I can give is the inspiration. Like I may not have all the answers or all the knowledge, but I can definitely inspire you. I can definitely plant a seed in your head and show you that it's easier than what you are perceiving in your mind. That's exactly what it is. That's I believe that. And I believe that God has given me that power to help inspire people. Like I believe that my duty is to talk to people and drop seeds in their minds so that they can grow and move to the next level. And that there's times where people are in my lives just for that purpose. Because I'll do what I do and then they're gone. And and so I'm not to say a traveler, but I'm often traveling through people's lives, helping them uh, break whatever like level up to the move to the next level through their mindset. Because sometimes it's just that little that little piece of hope for that day, you know, is what they need. Uh, you know what it's like to have a business not too great, 
you know what it's like to have this, and sometimes, you know, um, like, the Bible says, what have come us by the blood of the Lamb, Paul, of our testimony, like, your, your, your story is the road man, you know what I mean? Like, your story of overcoming adversity, like, you remember you had conversations with me, like, listen, bro, like, why, don't, why are you giving up, like, don't give up in, in this space, you know? Like, you're still here, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You're still standing. But that means you have you see, you know, and you share that little bit of insight, and then sometimes you give an example of a specific instance that turns around and are like, you know what, he's right. I may not get it that same day, but it could be the day after or whatever. Mm -hmm. I get that inspiration from you. I'm going. I'm going with it, you know, and I'll try it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's the beauty of the space. You know, you connections with people that you know, um, should hopefully bear some fruits in your life, you know? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. I, I, I've, yeah. I was saying to a friend last night, the other night, is like, I, and you know this for sure, I've tried so many businesses, I've tried to do so many stuff that it's, the, it's like in my nature. I said, like, I know how to make money to the point where it's just, to me, it's just like rubbing two sticks together. Fire. You know what I mean? And then we, you know, we go from that. And so I employ or I encourage everybody to try and go out and, and develop that skill because you develop it from trying. So just try as much as you can whenever you can. You know what I mean? And that that being said, I, I see that uh, my family is... <laughs> so they're monitoring the conversation. It's like, I thought you were ending the live stream. <laughs> You're still talking. <laughs> Thank you. I'm starving too. I'm hungry. So I'm going to go and enjoy my breakfast this morning. Um, and uh, you will catch up later. Thank you for all those that have watched us for the last, uh, what, two and a half hours or more. Listening to us ramble and talk shit, you know. Anything you want to say before you go? Um, one note, you know, yes. And uh, let me know if you're going to jump on again and it's all about friend. We've got you in the best day. We'll, we'll jump in. And, and for like old times, say, like, like this. Yes, it was beautiful. Um, like the victory lap. <laughs> yes. This is the victory lap. So, you know, that's what we should call it. This is the victory lap. For know? sure. Two years. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Um, Senpai, you know, this is the victory lap. And that doesn't mean that the race is over. This just means for this trial, you know what they call track meets? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right? And so, so for this version of the, the track meet, this is the victory lap. You know, two mm -hmm. years, we're still here, still standing. That's it. And we're still growing strong. We're just getting started. That's what I say. That's my new thing. We're just getting started. <laughs> That's it. Bye, Warm it up. Yes. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing. And uh, I look forward to doing this again with you soon, man. All right. Bye, everyone. Take care. I'm going to end this. Which wrong button? No. All right. Thanks again for joining and listening and watching. And uh, I'm going to try and do this tomorrow morning, especially if the weather's good. I'll be here for sure. All right, take care and don't forget to take